Hey there, do-it-yourself technicians. Do you have an old laptop that you want to upgrade? How old is too old? Is it worth investing any money in? I found this old Dell laptop when we were cleaning up my daughter Lizzie's bedroom a week or two ago. It hasn't been used in quite some time. It's a tough old laptop that I've had for a while that was given to me, but what should I do with it? Is it worth keeping? It's a Dell Studio 1555, and we can see from this service tag on the bottom that it has a serial number of 3ZZ4GJ1. We can look that serial number up on the Dell website and find out the specifications of the model when it was sold. As it turns out, the system configuration link comes up blank, which is pretty unusual. But in the warranty details tab, we can see that this machine was purchased way back in May of 2009, so it's a bit over 10 years old now. But we don't have the specs, so let's look at the machine itself. I downloaded and ran CPU-Z to find out what's on the machine. There's an episode up here if you want to see how that's all done. CPU-Z tells us on the front page that it's a Core 2 Duo 8600 processor running at 2.4 GHz. That's a reasonable sort of processor at the time. Pretty much similar to an i5. Better than the Core Solo and the Core Duo, but not as good as the Core 2 Quads. The Memory tab tells us we have 4 gb of DDR2 RAM, and the SPD tab tells us that that's split over two 2 GB modules. Graphics is provided by an AMD HD4500 mobile Radeon chip with 2 gigs of VRAM. That's great because it's not taking any of the main system RAM to run video. The hard disk is a 300 GB spinning disk and the screen resolution is 1366 by 768 which is fairly decent for a laptop of this size. In general the unit has a nice sturdy feel to it but you wouldn't want to lug it around all day because it's fairly heavy. It does have a HDMI port which is a little unusual for this time so it might be useful for streaming to a TV. One downside is that it runs hot. In a room with an ambient temperature of 25.3 degrees the trackpad was a toasty 39.1 degrees and the spacebar read in at 42 degrees Celsius. Underneath we recorded temperatures of over 50 degrees in some spot. In case anyone's wondering, the thermometer that I use is this beastie here and you can find a link to buy it up here. So we have a hot old machine with specs that while they were okay in the day are looking pretty sad and sorry now. The question is what can we do? The first thing I did was look for some extra RAM but I couldn't find anything better than what was in it in my box of spares. I was looking for a 4 gig DDR2 sodium module, but all I found were 2 gig modules, which is what was already in it. So I headed over to eBay to see what I could find there, but the only 4 gig DDR2 modules that I could find were over $60 each, plus shipping to Australia from the UK and the US, so really not worth it for this machine. $50 to increase it to 6 gig or $120 to increase it to 8 gig is just simply not worth the money. What about an SSD? That will speed up boot times as well as general operations and is probably going to work really well. I found a spare 120 gig SanDisk SSD that I had floating around that I think cost about $35. Before we do that though, let's do some benchmarking and see how the machine performs as it is. I installed NovaBench and ran it through and got a score of 456 with the disk score in particular really letting it down. Now there's two ways we can go about installing an SSD. We can either image across the existing operating system from the spinning disk or just start with a fresh install. Because the existing hard disk is bigger than the SSD we'd have to shrink it and that's a pain and there's nothing really on the machine that we want so I decided to go with a fresh install. I'm not going to bore you with the install process if you want to see how it's done you can see this video up here. We installed Windows 10 plus all of the updates, installed NovaBench and ran it. And the new score was 481, which is a five and a bit percent increase. Here's where it gets interesting. In the original test, it was clearly the disk speed that was slowing the machine down. What we've done by installing the SSD is double the speed of the weakest link. That makes a real world difference. Benchmarks aren't everything. The real question is, how does the machine perform in the real world? Boot time, the time from pressing the power button to getting a working desktop, dropped from a minute down to 35 seconds. Now that's a difference you can really feel. The simple act of opening Chrome went from 17 seconds down to just three. 
The system's also so much cooler and quieter. The spacebar and trackpad are down to 32 and 36 degrees, and the fan's not working constantly. I didn't do any actual testing, but the fact that there's no spinning hard disk and the fan's not spinning the whole time will mean battery life would probably be significantly longer now. Win, win, win. This machine is totally usable again. It's gone from sluggish and unresponsive to completely workable. Not for a power user, but for somebody doing light web surfing and email, it's a winner. On a whim, I even tried installing Minecraft, and that actually ran reasonably well. All in all, I'd say this was a complete success, turning a basically useless machine into a completely usable one. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button down below. And if you've got some old hardware at home you want to know if you can revive, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician and navigate your technology maze. You can subscribe to the channel here, subscribe to our mailing list up here, and maybe see some videos you haven't seen before here and here. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.